Uganda, the green and fertile country in the heart of East Africa, has, despite its beauty and abundant natural resources, challenges to face as it develops. One of these challenges is the limited supply of electricity to the ever-growing demand. Less than 10% of Uganda's 31 million residents have access to power. Rural areas in particular remain in the darkness after sunset. Without electricity, businesses are constrained in their growth, hospitals and health centers can only offer limited services, and it is difficult for school children to study in the evenings. Hydropower generated on the River Nile is the main source of electricity for the national grid. However, most rural areas are not connected and will remain without electricity for the foreseeable future due to the high cost of grid extensions. Small decentralized hydropower projects are a viable solution for providing electricity to rural communities that are located near rivers and streams with potential sites for hydropower development. Hydropower projects can be implemented in various sizes depending on the natural conditions. In Uganda, there are large projects such as the Bujagali and Owen Falls dams on the River Nile. These generate hundreds of megawatts. On the other hand, small hydropower schemes like mini, micro and pico hydropower projects are constructed on smaller streams and rivers. These are connected to the national grid or power isolated distribution networks. Mini hydropower plants can be designed with minimal negative environmental impact. Most of them don't use big dams, but only divert some of the water to generate power before the water is fed back to the river. These are commonly referred to as run of the river schemes. Apart from River Nile, Uganda's hydropower potential is mainly concentrated in three areas. Along the Rift Valley in western and southwestern Uganda, in the West Nile, and in the Mount Elgin area in eastern Uganda. The micro-hydropower scheme in Swam is situated on the slopes of Mount Elgin, bordering Kenya. The SWAM project is a community initiative supported by the German Development Corporation through GIZ and the Rural Electrification Agency. Run of the river hydropower schemes, like the one in SWAM, consist of the following main components. Diversion weir, power channel, forebay, penstock, powerhouse with a turbine and generator, transmission and distribution grid. So right here, we are at Swam Micro Hydro Power Scheme. It is uh, made up of all those components. We have the water body, that's the river you see over there. And what we are going to do, we are going to have a weir, a short wall across the river. It's going to be out of concrete, mass concrete. And then we shall have the intake next to that big stone over there. And that intake will have a gate, a sluice gate, that we shall use to regulate the amount of water in the channel. For instance, sometimes we may need to do maintenance of our channel, so we shall simply shut it up.
we had the desilting bay and foa bay and this is actually a concrete chamber which is going to be made out of reinforced concrete. So over there we shall have a pipe connecting now from the foa bay to the powerhouse. So this is where we are now achieving the head. Our head here is about 14 meters from the foa bay to the powerhouse. So when water comes through the pipe, after it has hit the turbine, it will go down into the chamber and finally back into the river. The turbine is connected to a generator which produces electricity. The electric power is then fed into the transmission and distribution system before it reaches the end users. The SWAM project is still under construction and will be commissioned in the near future. It is expected to supply electricity to approximately 500 people, small businesses and institutions in the area. Typically, for a hydropower scheme to be developed, there must be power potential and power demand. Power potential means that the river or stream must have enough water even in the dry season and have a waterfall or high gradient. In the case of isolated hydropower projects, which are not connected to the national grid, the nearby settlements constitute the power demand. Mini hydropower schemes are often community projects. Once the hydropower potential of a given site is confirmed, the idea is shared amongst the community, who then decide whether or not to develop the scheme. Once the decision is made to invest time and effort in the project, intensive studies are carried out to form the basis for designing a suitable hydropower scheme. The amount of electricity that can be generated depends on the amount of water available throughout the year and on the height difference between two points in the river. This height difference is also referred to as the head. Since stream flow data is not easily available for most small rivers, new data has to be collected for many projects. Also required is an assessment of the power demand, which includes an assessment of the local population's willingness and ability to pay. This can be done through interviews with local leaders and a detailed house-to-house -house survey. Once all the required information is available, a technical design of the scheme can be made. It comprises the selection of the electromechanical equipment and production of technical drawings for all the components. If the community is to manage the project, the residents come together and form a community-based organization or cooperative. This body should have an elected executive and its own bank account for depositing cash contributions and revenues from the sale of electricity. Before the scheme can be implemented, the project developer needs to assess the environmental impact of the proposed project and seek approval from different government organizations, such as the National Environment Management Authority, the Electricity Regulatory Authority and the Directorate of Water Resource Management. When all this is done, construction can start. After the site is cleared and the necessary excavations are done, the channel, powerhouse and other civil structures are built and the penstock is installed. Close supervision of the construction is vital for achieving good workmanship 
which ensures durability of the plant and helps reduce costs in the long run. Once the power scheme and the distribution system are completed, households and other consumers can be connected. To make the scheme sustainable, the operator needs to monitor its technical operation and perform routine maintenance, such as cleaning the trash racks, as well as greasing the turbine and the generator. It is important to note that even hydropower projects that follow a non-profit approach need to generate enough revenue to be able to pay staff salaries and repair or exchange broken components.